Thank you. I'm Mr. Laner, and welcome back to Mr. Laner's Math Extravaganza. In today's webisode, we're going to take a look at finding multiples. Now, these are your friendly little multiplication problems that you guys remember way back in like third grade, fourth grade, and guess what? They're still around in sixth grade, and in seventh, and in eighth, and so forth, and so on. You're still going to use these uh, throughout your life. So if you're like, oh yeah, I got multiplication, those facts are down, I got them good, or if you're like, eh, I'm so-so, you might want to refresh on your multiplication uh, facts and multiples because you will see this a lot, not only this year, uh, but more in your life. And specifically today, we're going to take a look at how teachers in the classroom use multiples, uh, divisors, factors all the time to kind of break up students into groups. Let's take a look at an example problem. In this first example, it says, Mr. Lanner has a class of 30 students. He wants to break his class up into even groups. How can he split his class up evenly? So imagine we're going to do some workstations, and there's 30 of you in the classroom. How can I make even groups so that there's the same number of students in each group? Well, how do I figure that out? Well, I need to look at factors, I need to look at divisors, I need to look at my multiples. So I'm thinking 30 students. So one way I could break this up is I know that I can have three groups with 10 students in each because if there's three groups with 10, here's where the multiples come in. One group would be 10 students, the second group would be 20 students, the third group would be 30 students. So I could do three groups of 10 and that's one way I can have even groups with the 30 students. Or I can kind of flip it. We talked about our triangles of our uh, multiplication and division triangles. I can also do 10 groups of three students. So actually, there's multiples of three. I'm going to use my fingers. I usually don't say that, but I'm going to try it. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. So I can have 10 groups of three students in each group. Uh, that's two ways I can break up the, the grouping so far. I can also do five groups of six students or six groups of five students. I can do two groups of 15, oh they're pretty big groups, that might be good for like a class debate, half and half, um, or I can do 15 groups of two students, so if I want very small groups for a one-on-one -on -one discussion, uh, I can do very small groups of just two students. Uh, so I can use any of these six options to split my class into even groups. Again, I worked with, like we've talked about so far, factors and divisors, I work with those, I also use my multiples in there and yes teachers actually do do this one kind of figure out trying to figure out uh, groups so as we look at how many students are in the classroom it helps if it's a composite number like if there's 24 like in our class and everybody's here ooh, that's a nice composite number for me to break up if somebody's absent and say there's 23 students it becomes a little bit challenging and one group has to have maybe one less it won't be even groups which brings me to my next question which is going to be your question Okay, let's not say that somebody's absent, but I still have 30 students in my class. But what I want to know is how I can break my class up into groups, and what are some ways I can split my class into uneven groups. So I still want to group students, but you know I'm feeling a little different today. I don't want to make them even groups. I kind of want to have a different number of people in each group. So what you're going to do at home is try and figure out how Mr. Lander can split his class up into uneven groups. Hopefully you got your paper out, you got the pencil ready to go. Go ahead, pause the video, and we'll see what you come up with. Okay, now for this one, there is many ways that you can do this. As I'm breaking my class up into groups, remember I said I want it to be uneven groups. So in the first problem we did the even groups, now we want to make some uneven groups. So as I'm doing this, there are a number of ways I can do this. I'm just going to share a few that I came up with. You might have ones that are totally different, and that's perfectly fine because there's tons of ways you could have attacked this problem. I'll share a couple of mine here. I could have made two groups of seven. So let's see, two groups of seven. So seven and seven is 14. And two groups of eight. Well, eight and eight is 16. So 16 plus 14, that's 30 students. And look, these groups have seven and these groups have eight, so it's uneven. If I was in our classroom and I said, all right, there's one group of seven, there's another group of seven, there's a group of eight, there's a group of eight, I still have 30 students that are in groups, 
but these two have eight in each group and those two had seven in each group, so they're uneven groups. I can also make three groups of eight, so let's think multiples again, eight, 16, 24, and one group of six. So add six to 24, that would become 30. And then I can also make two groups of nine, nine and nine is 18, two groups of four, four and four is eight, and two groups of two, two and two is four. And if I add those up, a lot of mental math over here. Two groups of nine was 18, two groups of two was four, so four and 18 is 22, and then two groups of four would be eight, 22 plus eight would be 30. And again, you may have had some different ones at home on there, uh, which is perfectly fine. Again, we're kind of starting to utilize all this information together, the factors, divisors, multiples, they're all going together, and we're applying it to some real life situations when you're gonna kind of break up into groups, and it might not be in school, you might be like, oh, I don't wanna know what I'm gonna break up in school. But maybe you have friends and you're breaking up for teams to play a game, you're gonna play a sport or activity. Um, or maybe you're at like a birthday party and you have friends over and you wanna do a, a board game or an activity uh, at the party. You have to know that some of these factors here uh, and multiples be able to divide up your groups. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Laner's Math Extravaganza. As always, we'll see you next time.